with heat exchangers as it is first lecture we will just start with uh, the definition the classification and applications where heat exchangers are used initially let's see what are heat exchangers how they are defined and what are the applications where heat exchangers are used now see heat exchangers are the devices in which heat is transferred between two fluids which are at different temperatures without mixing of the fluids let's take a very simple example of heat exchangers we are using household refrigerator now in that refrigerator commonly we call it as fridge right in that refrigerator at the back side of that refrigerator there are black coils which are called as condenser coils so that condenser coils are nothing but it is one type of heat exchanger if you are using air conditioner window air conditioner outside the window outside the room there is condenser that condenser is also an example of heat exchanger so how we define heat exchanger heat exchangers are the devices in which heat is transferred between two fluids at different temperatures the two fluids must be at different temperatures then only exchange of heat will be there uh, we can take plenty of example just now we discussed the example of household refrigerator then we have discussed air conditioner let's take example of a radiator of a car in radiator of a car cooling of water takes place right now when cooling of water takes place the same water is again circulated to the engine that water will take heat from the engine it will come into the uh, radiator and in radiator that water will reject the heat now see it is cross flow type of heat exchanger the classification we will discuss afterwards but just now we are discussing the definition so how heat exchangers are defined heat exchangers are the devices in which heat is transferred between two fluids which are at different temperatures without mixing of the fluids let's take example of that household refrigerator which are the two fluids one fluid is refrigerant and second fluid is air take example of air conditioner air condenser of a air conditioner which are the two fluids in which exchange of heat is taking place one is refrigerant and one is outside air take example of radiator of a car what are the two fluids one is hot water and second is air so is there any mixing of the two fluids no both fluids are at different temperatures and there is no mixing of the fluids so how we define heat exchangers we define heat exchangers like heat exchangers are the devices in which heat is transferred between two fluids which are at different temperatures without mixing of the fluids i think the definition is clear to you now what are the applications where heat exchangers are used there are plenty of applications where heat exchangers are used for example they are used for space heating they are used in refrigeration they are used in air conditioning in power plant we use condenser boiler condensers boilers are nothing but heat exchangers in chemical plants petrochemical plants petroleum refineries everywhere wherever exchange of heat is there there being a engineer we have to design an a device which is called as heat exchanger what will be our objective we have to design that heat exchanger for required rate of heat transfer between the two fluids either a constant will be given to us that we have to cool this fluid up to this temperature so depending upon that we have to finalize fix the dimensions we have to fix how many number of tubes are required what should be material of the tubes how many number of passes should be there what should be the dimensions of that heat exchanger okay that we'll discuss later on so these are some of the applications also there are applications like natural gas processing methane gas is there for processing of that we need heat exchangers for sewage treatment also we use heat exchangers okay so we have seen definition and application of heat exchangers what is definition heat exchangers are the device in which heat is transferred between two fluids which are at different temperatures without mixing of the fluids now see types of heat exchangers or more commonly it is called as classification of heat exchangers based on the geometry if you go for uh, the types of heat exchangers there are plenty because hundreds of geometries are there but broadly speaking the main three types of heat exchangers are one is surface type of heat exchanger which is also called as direct tri uh, transfer type of heat exchanger second is storage type of heat exchanger and third is direct contact type of heat exchanger i repeat basically or on a broader scale there are three types of heat exchangers which are those one is surface type second is storage type and third is direct contact type of heat exchangers 
Now let us see these heat exchangers one by one. For example, surface type of heat exchangers, which is also called as a direct transfer type of heat exchanger. Direct transfer type of heat exchanger or surface type of heat exchanger is the one in which hot and cold fluids flow simultaneously through a device and heat is transferred through a wall separating the fluids. Now, if you look at the figure, this is tube in tube type of heat exchanger. I repeat, this is tube in tube type of heat exchanger. Now see through the inner tube, hot fluid is flowing. From the left side, hot fluid is entering. From here, the fluid is entering. And from here, the hot fluid is leaving. Now, cold fluid is entering from this left side and it is leaving from the right side. Right? Okay. Now this is tube in tube type of heat exchanger. This is also called as concentric tube type of heat exchanger. Two tubes are there. One fluid will flow through the inner tube and the second fluid will flow through the annular space which is present between the two tubes. The fluid which flows through the inner tube is called as tube fluid. The fluid which flows through the inner tube is called as tube fluid and the fluid which flows through the annulus is called as annulus fluid. Now see in this case, hot fluid is tube fluid and cold fluid is annulus fluid. Okay, so this cold fluid will flow through the annulus. Simply what will happen? This hot fluid will reject its heat to the cold fluid and temperature of hot fluid will decrease. Let's say THI is the inlet temperature of hot fluid and THO is the outlet temperature of hot fluid. Obviously THO will be less than THI. Why? Because hot fluid has rejected heat. Right? And if I talk about cold fluid, what will happen to the temperature of cold fluid? Now this cold fluid, it is flowing through the annulus. At this tube, at the surface of tube, there will be heat exchange from hot fluid to the cold fluid. The hot fluid will reject its heat to the cold fluid. So what will happen to cold fluid? Obviously, the temperature of cold fluid will increase. Let's say TCI is the inlet temperature of cold fluid and TCO is the outlet temperature of cold fluid. Then obvi obviously, we can say that TCO will be greater than TCI. Why? Because the temperature of cold fluid has increased. Why it has increased? It has increased because it has absorbed heat. One fluid has rejected heat and one fluid has absorbed heat. But where did this heat exchange has occurred? This heat exchange has occurred at a wall which separates hot fluid and cold fluid. In this case, that wall is nothing but the tube. The inner tube is nothing but the wall at which this, this exchange of heat has been taken place. So tell me, is it clear to you? It is called a surface type of heat exchanger because he, heat exchange occurs at the surface. Heat exchange occurs at the surface. Okay, so this is surface type of heat exchanger which is also called as direct transfer type of heat exchanger. Now, we'll see the second type. Second type is storage type of heat exchanger. Now, what is storage type of heat exchanger? Storage type of heat exchanger is the one in which heat is transferred from hot fluid to cold fluid and that heat exchange occurs through a coupling medium which is in the form of solid matrix. Now see, if you see the figure, this hatched lines represents the solid material which is also called as matrix. This material can absorb heat. This matrix can absorb heat. Now there are four walls, wall A, wall B, wall C and wall D. Now see, initially wall A and wall D are open and hot fluid is allowed to flow over the matrix. Now what will happen when the hot fluid flows over the matrix? The hot fluid rejects heat to this matrix and because of this, the internal energy of this matrix increases. Right? After this, these two walls A and D are closed and walls B and C are open and the cold fluid is allowed to flow over the matrix. Now see this matrix has become hot because it has absorbed the heat. Now when this cold fluid flows over the matrix, what will happen? The matrix will reject heat to the cold fluid and because of which the temperature of cold fluid will increase. Now this is called as storage type of heat exchanger because the heat is stored inside the matrix. Previous heat exchanger it was called as it was called as surface type of heat exchanger. Why it was called as surface type of heat exchanger? Because heat exchange was taking place at the surface. 
this is called as storage type of heat exchanger because heat is stored inside an element which is called as matrix now see the hot and cold fluid flows alternatively through the matrix the hot fluid rejects heat to the matrix and cold fluid absorbs that is cold fluid picks up the heat from the matrix and its temperature increases right being a heat exchanger why we design heat exchangers we design heat exchangers so that there will be heat exchange between hot fluid and cold fluid so this is second type of heat exchanger which is called as storage type of heat exchanger i think it is clear to you first was surface type this was surface type tube in tube type of heat exchanger see again in surface type there are plenty of times right we are just basically focusing on what are the what are the broader classification of heat exchangers on a broader scales the heat exchangers are classified into three categories which are those first is surface type of heat exchangers or direct transfer type of heat exchangers second is storage type of heat exchangers right and third is direct contact type of heat exchangers now see in direct contact type of heat exchangers the fluids are not separated for example if heat has to be transferred between gas and liquid the gas will be bubbled through the liquid or there may be a case that a liquid is sprayed in the form of droplets in the gas for example you might have seen this if you have seen cooling towers if you have seen a sugar industry right over there we are using cooling towers or even if in power plants we use cooling towers now see even if you are not seen that this arrangement is very simple just look at the schematic water hot water is sprayed from this pipe now when it is sprayed it will form fall down in the form of droplets now see these hot water droplets they are moving from upper side to the lower side they are moving in downward direction at the same time air is moving in upward direction now see that air will come in contact with those hot droplets and at the surface of the droplets there will be heat exchange between droplets and air so what will happen air will absorb that heat and the temperature of air will increase this is inlet of air this is outlet of air so there is heat exchange between water and air and there is direct contact between air and water so that's why this is called as direct contact type of heat exchangers i believe it is clear to you so basically there are three types of heat exchangers one is surface type one is storage type and one is direct contact type now see now we'll see the classification in detail just now we have said that on a broader scale there are three types of heat exchangers which are those one is surface one is storage and one is direct contact now just focus on surface type of heat exchangers which is also called as direct transfer type of heat exchangers now see in surface type of heat exchangers again there are three types right which are those first is tubular heat exchangers it depends on the geometry tubular heat exchangers in tubular heat exchangers again there are two types which are those one is concentric tube heat exchanger and second is shell and tube type of heat exchanger right okay now in surface type the second type is plate heat exchangers and third is extended surface heat exchangers now we'll see one by one tubular plate and extended surface right which are the three types in again surface type in surface type there are three types one is tubular plate and extended surface i will just repeat on a broader scale heat exchangers are classified into three categories one is surface type one is storage type and one is direct contact type now if i talk about only surface type of heat exchanger again it is classified into three categories which are those tubular type heat exchangers plate heat exchangers and extended surface heat exchangers if i talk only about tubular heat exchangers again it is classified into two types one is concentric tube heat exchangers and one is shell and tube heat exchangers okay so we'll see one by one initially we'll see tubular heat exchanger now i think that the figure is visible to you right this is the figure of tubular heat exchanger this is also called as tube in tube type of heat exchanger or this is also called as concentric tube heat exchanger now see one fluid will flow through the inner tube and one fluid will flow through the annular space which is available between inner tube and outer tube i think you can see this this is inner tube this one is outer tube right now see from here one fluid will enter from the left side and from here it will exit generally hot fluid is selected as the tube fluid right so from here the hot fluid will move and from here 
this is the inlet for annulus fluid and this is the outlet for annular fluid right so from here the cold fluid will enter right it will move through the area which is available between inner tube and outer tube which is also called as annular area or annulus area and it will exit from over here tell me is it clear to you so this is simple schematic of concentric tube heat exchanger now see here i can make two arrangements either both fluids hot fluid and cold fluid either they may flow in the same direction that is from left to right right or there may be a case that the both fluids are flowing in opposite direction if both fluids are flowing in same direction that type of heat exchanger is called as parallel flow heat exchanger and if both fluids are flowing in opposite direction that type of heat exchanger is called as counter flow heat exchanger now see parallel flow parallel fl flow means what hot fluid and cold fluid flow in the same direction this is tube fluid this is inlet of hot fluid this is outlet of hot fluid this is inlet of cold fluid this is outlet of cold fluid now see both fluids are flowing in the same direction right from here the exchange of heat is taking place through the inner tube cold fluid is fluid is entering from here and cold fluid will leave from here is it clear to you why it is called as parallel flow type of heat exchanger it is called as parallel flow type of heat exchanger because both fluids are flowing in the same direction now say if i keep same direction for hot fluid let's say hot fluid is entering from this side and leaving from this side but if i change the direction of cold fluid cold fluid is entering from this side and cold fluid is leaving from this side now in this case the tubular fluid is moving from left to right and annular fluid is moving from right to left so both fluids are flowing in opposite direction right so this type of heat exchanger is called as counter flow heat exchanger parallel flow means both fluids flow in same direction counter flow means both fluids flow in opposite direction i believe that this is clear to you these are called as tube in tube type of heat exchangers okay now see hot fluid inlet hot fluid outlet right cold fluid inlet cold fluid outlet initially we will discuss about parallel flow now if i draw the temperature profile for parallel flow heat exchanger now see hot fluid is entering from here so this is inlet temperature of hot fluid inlet temperature of hot fluid is denoted by thi t stands for temperature temperature is denoted by capital t h is for hot fluid and i is for inlet temperature thi is the temperature of hot fluid intentionally i have not written it over here see this temperature temperature at this point is called as thi now see this temperature temperature of the hot fluid at the outlet is called as tho is called as tho hot fluid will reject heat whenever any fluid rejects heat its temperature will decrease so tho will be less than thi is it clear to you what has happened to hot fluid it has rejected heat and its temperature has fallen down its temperature has decreased so tho is less than thi in some of the books outlet is also called as exit so they have used the i am referring sengel and in sengel it is called as tho that's why i am calling it as tho what is tho tho is the outlet temperature of hot fluid is it clear to you what will happen to hot fluid its temperature will decrease now what will happen to cold fluid now in case of cold fluid this is tci tci is nothing but inlet temperature of cold fluid this is tco tco is outlet temperature of cold fluid now cold fluid it, it has absorbed heat from the hot fluid so when it has absorbed heat its temperature will increase so this is tco tco will be greater than tci now see both directions both arrows they are parallel to each other they are from left to right that's why this is temperature profile of parallel flow heat exchanger i believe it is clear to you this is construction of parallel flow heat exchanger and this is temperature profile of parallel flow heat exchanger thi tho tci tco hot fluid cold fluid is it clear to you now counter flow heat exchanger what is the difference between parallel flow and counter flow heat exchanger the schematic is exactly same the arrangement is exactly same only one change is change is made what is that change the change is in case of counter flow heat exchangers 
both fluids flow in opposite direction so in this case the hot fluid is moving from entering at the left end leaving at the right end and the cold fluid is entering at the right end and it is leaving at the left end now see if i draw temperature profile of the hot fluid here is the inlet at the left there is inlet of the hot fluid at the right there is outlet of the hot fluid so this is thi this is tho right okay obvious that tho will be less than thi now see this is tci cold fluid is entering from the right side and it is leaving from the left side so this is tci and here you will get temperature tco it is obvious that temperature of cold fluid will rise if you take any heat exchanger right it is obvious that temperature of cold fluid will increase and temperature of hot fluid will drop only what is the difference in between these two temperature profiles here both fluids are flowing parallel to each other and here both fluids are flowing in opposite direction so i think it is clear to you now the next type of surface heat exchanger see in heat exchangers there are three types which are those surface storage and direct contact in surface again there are types which are those first is tubular in tubular there are two types first is concentric tube and second is shell and tube so let us see what is shell and tube heat exchanger in industry this heat exchanger is widely used it is called as shell and tube type of heat exchangers it consists of bundle of tubes see these are called as tubes you can so see over here tubes 1 2 3 4 as it is schematic i have drawn or i have taken that figure from a book so they have shown only four because four tubes because it is a schematic i also i will show you some of the direct photographs of the shell and tube heat exchangers where plenty of tubes are used a bundle of tubes is used this is just to explain the working principle now see this is tube inlet the tube fluid will come inside from this side right inside the front end header now tube fluid will flow through the tubes and it will move outwards from this rear end header so this is inlet for the tube fluid this is outlet for the tube fluid right so bundle of tubes are there now shell fluid see number of tubes are there they are connected at the end and this arrangement is placed inside the shell the axis of tubes is parallel to axis of the shell now where the shell fluid will move it will move over the tubes it will move through a space in between shell and the tubes right now when the shell fluid is moving these plates are provided these are called as baffle plates what is the intention behind providing baffle plates so as to increase the effective contact between shell fluid and tube fluid right because of this baffles this zigzag kind of arrangement is provided for the shell fluid right okay so Uh, just focus on the nomenclature what different names are there see this outer cylinder is called as shell inner tubes they are called as tubes the tubes are connected at the ends right okay these plates are called as baffle plates which are used to provide so that uh, zigzag the second fluid the shell fluid can move in zigzag manner see in this arrangement the concept will be more clear to you these are the tubes right this outer is the shell right tube sheet is there at the end of see at the both ends tubes are connected to a tube sheet and this arrangement is placed inside the shell right so this is called as tube sheet number of tubes are connected at the end to a tube sheet and this arrangement is placed inside the shell these are baffle plates see tube fluid it will sorry shell fluid it will enter from here it will move like this and from here it will move outward or it may be other thing also like it will enter from here it will move like this and from here it will exit both arrangements are possible see these are called as nozzles nozzles are inlets and outlets right okay so baffle plates you have seen tube sheets you have seen and shell and tubes that is what you have seen so in shell and tube type of heat exchanger bundles of tubes are there axis of the tubes are parallel to axis of the shell there are two fluids one is called as shell fluid and one is called as tube fluid from where do the tube fluid passes it passes through the tubes from where do the shell fluid passes it passes through the passage in between tubes and shell the tubes are fixed in sheets at the end which are called as tube header sheets just now we have seen tube header sheets or these are also called as tube sheets at the ends the tubes are fixed to a tube sheet 
okay we have seen nozzles inlet and outlet arrangement right now when we design a heat exchanger there is very important concept which is also called as the ratio of surface area of a heat exchanger to volume of heat exchanger it is denoted by beta now for shell and tube type of heat exchanger the value of beta is in between 100 to 500 what is this beta it is the ratio of surface area of heat exchanger per unit volume of heat exchanger so it is a ratio of surface area to volume so its unit is meter square per meter cube right now we cannot say like it is meter square per meter cube so meter square will get cancelled and it is 1 upon meter or meter raised to minus 1 it is not like that beta the unit of beta is meter square per meter cube because what is the concept of beta it is the ratio of surface area to volume of the heat exchanger okay these figures are very important because these figures decides whether your heat exchanger is a compact heat exchanger or not afterwards we'll see what is compact heat exchangers till now what we have seen we have seen three categories surface type storage type and direct mixing type then in surface type we have seen first tubular in that tubular we have seen parallel flow counter flow their temperature profiles and then now we are focusing on shell and tube heat exchanger see this is tube header sheet this is also shell and tube heat exchanger right and this is flange flange is provided so that we can fix it so this is industrial shell and tube type of heat exchangers you can see how many number of tubes are there or I intentionally i have included this photograph so that uh, the broadness or of the area should be clear to you right okay now in shell and tube there are again two types see this is one shell pass and two tube pass now see the shell fluid enters from the right side and exits from the left side so there is only one pass pass means what movement from left to right or right to left that is called as pass for example if you focus on this upper figure if you focus on tube fluid it moves from right to left and then left to right so there are two tube passes i repeat there are two tube passes if you focus on the shell fluid it enters from right and exits from left right so there is one shell pass so what type of heat exchanger is this this is one shell pass and two tube pass heat exchanger i repeat what kind of arrangement is this this is one shell pass and two tube pass now if you focus on this figure just uh, we'll see one by one initially just see the tube fluid now if you look at the tube fluid how many times it changes the direction one first right to left then left to right then right to left then left to right so how many number of passes are there for the tube fluid in this case there are four passes right there are four passes so what type of heat exchanger is this what kind of arrangement is this four tube pass right how many shell passes are there if you look at the diagram properly shell fluid enters from this side it moves from right to left and again it will move from left to right and it will exit from here so two passes are there for the shell fluid and four passes are there for the tube fluid so how will you what name you will what label you will give to this heat exchanger it will be two shell pass and four tube pass heat exchanger i repeat it will be two shell pass and four tube pass heat exchanger the upper one is one shell pass why it is one shell pass because shell fluid it is just moving from right to left it may be right to left it may be left to right one direction means one pass right moment from left to right or right, right to left it is called as one pass okay now here the concept will be more clear to you now if you talk about shell fluid see it will just enter from here and leave from here so it is one pass for shell fluid it is only one right if you talk about tube fluid it will enter from here and leave from here so it is just moving from right to left so for tube fluid it is one pass for shell also it is one pass so it is one shell pass and one tube pass if you think about this right even if the schematic is not given directly the cut section view is there now see if you think about tube fluid it will enter from here it will move from this left side to right side and again it will move from right side to left side because inlet and exit they are on the same side so it is quite but obvious that there will be two passes so there are two tube passes and if you talk about shell here is the inlet for shell and here is the outlet of shell 
So it will enter from here, it will move over the baffles and it will exit from here. So there is only one shell pass, right? So what kind of arrangement is this? This is one shell pass and two tube pass. I believe that it is clear to you or I expect that it is clear to you. Now, first was tubular type of heat exchangers and shell and tube type of heat exchangers. Second is plate heat exchangers. Now see, as the name itself implies that plate heat exchanger means plates are there. A series of large rectangular thin metal plates which are clamped to together to form narrow parallel plate channels. See, because of these plates, these are the plates. Let's say this is plate 1, plate 2, plate 3, plate 4, plate 5, right? Which are clamped in between these two plates. So because of these passenger, passages are formed. Let's call these passages, let's say this is passage 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So six passages are formed because of the plates, right? So one fluid, let's say blue indicates cold fluid. It will flow through passage number, let's say two, four and six, right? And red, let's say red indicates hot fluid. So it will flow through passage one, three and five, right? So I, through alternate passages, the hot fluid and cold fluid are moving and through the plates, there will be heat exchange. So this is called as plate heat exchanger, right? So in this diagram, the arrangement will be more clear to you. Red in, let's say that red indicates hot fluid and blue indicates cold fluid. So through alternate passages, the hot fluid and cold fluid are moving. And through the plates, there will be heat exchange. So this is called as plate type of heat exchanger. I repeat, this is called as plate type of heat exchanger. Now see, this is actual names of the components or this is industrial plate type of heat exchanger. Hmm? Okay. Being a thermal engineer, just we have to carry out the analysis, right? So we'll not go into details. What is the name of the components? How it is clamped? How that assembly is made? We'll just look from thermal perspective. I included this photograph so that it is clear to you. It should be clear to you. Uh, okay. The next type is extended surface type of heat exchangers. Now, what is extended surface heat exchangers? In conduction, you have studied extended surfaces. Fins are called as extended surfaces, right? Now, see, in this case also, fins are attached on the heat transfer surface. What is the objective behind providing fins? The objective behind providing fins is to increase the heat transfer area. We say that Q is equal to HA delta T. We call that A as AE. A is nothing but effective area. Because more is the effective area, more will be heat exchange, right? Okay. So what is the advantage of providing fins? Because of fins, the heat transfer area per unit volume will increase because we are increasing the area, right? So the ratio of area of heat exchanger per unit volume of heat exchanger, it will increase. And as I have told you, that ratio is very important. That ratio is very crucial in the design of heat exchangers and that ratio is called as beta. For the compact heat exchangers, the value of beta is greater than 700, okay? Now see, here the arrangement will be clear to you. What is this extended surface heat exchanger? Now if you look at fluid one, fluid one is moving through this passage, right? And fluid two, it is moving through this passage. This is cross flow type of heat exchanger. This is cross flow type of heat exchanger. And why it is called as extended surface heat exchanger? Because extended surfaces, that is fins are provided. This is the actual photograph. You can see over here, fins are provided, right? Fins are provided in the alternate compartments. Let's say compartment one and three. Through these compartments, hot fluid is flowing. And compartment number two and four, through this cold fluid is flowing. It is flowing through the fins, right? What is the intention behind providing fins? Obviously, the surface area will increase. The area through which heat exchange is taking place, that area will increase. And if that area increases within very low space, you can have maximum heat exchange. Nowadays, it is a, there is a trend called as compact heat exchangers, right? Space constraints are there. So we have to design compact heat exchangers. This is one more tube fin type of heat exchangers. The photograph as well as schematic is in front of you. Now see through the tubes, the tubular fluid will flow and over the fins, the second fluid will flow. It may be liquid to liquid or generally it is liquid to gases type of heat exchangers. Because of these fins, what happens? the effective surface area increases. So within the same volume, if fins are not provided, the effective surface area only will be the surface area of the tubes. Because of fins, now see, the surface area has increased. 
so the ratio of surface area to volume it has drastically increased right okay this is one more similar kind of construction is there one fluid will enter from here it will leave from the bottom one fluid will move at right angles tube and plate type of heat exchanger this is the actual photograph what is the advantage of providing fins the advantage of providing fins is that effective surface area increases okay now we have seen the classification right now there is also classification which is based on the flow arrangement already we have discussed this what will be classification based on flow arrangement either it will be a parallel flow heat exchanger counter flow heat exchanger or cross flow heat exchanger what is the meaning of word parallel flow both fluids will flow in the same direction what is the meaning of the word counter flow both fluids flow in opposite directions and what is the meaning of the word cross flow both fluids flow at right angles to each other let's take a simple example a plate is there below the plate hot fluid is flowing from the bottom side of the plate and above the plate cold fluid is flowing right so this is a type of cross flow type of heat exchanger simple example is your car radiator water is flowing in vertical directions through the tubes right and air is flowing perpendicular to the fins right so car radiator is example of cross flow type of heat exchangers now see this is cross flow type of heat exchanger why it is cross flow type of heat exchanger because both fluids they are flowing at right angles to each other in cross flow again there are two types one is mixed and one is unmixed if you look at the diagram carefully you you can work out the difference what is the difference between mixed and unmixed see in case of mixed let's say this fluid is flowing this fluid it can move with itself for example if this is hot fluid the hot fluid can mix with the hot fluid it will move as a single entity but if you look at this figure this hot fluid it will it it is having constants it has to move through this space between two fins right so it cannot mix with itself right so this is unmixed type of cross flow type of heat exchanger and this is mixed type of cross flow type of heat exchanger okay what are compact heat exchangers the ratio of heat transfer surface area right to volume of heat exchanger is called as area density right area density is denoted by beta if beta is greater than 700 what is unit of beta it is meter square per meter cube if beta is greater than 700 that type of heat exchangers are called as compact heat exchangers what are the examples of compact heat exchangers one is car radiators right in case of car radiators the value of beta what is beta beta is the area density it is greater than 700 in case of car radiators beta is 1000 if you if we take example of regenerator of a stirling engine the value of beta is 15000 if you to take example of a human lung the value of area density is 20000 there is one more area which is called as biomimics later on we'll discuss about that area human biology it is one of the best designs right from all perspectives it may be from thermal perspective or any perspective okay so this this is this you might have seen this heat exchanger gas to liquid type of compact heat exchanger which is used in residential air conditioning systems now see these are the temperature profiles we'll just discuss the temperature profiles and then we'll stop meantime you can write down your attendance in chat box okay okay so these are the temperature profiles of parallel flow heat exchanger and counter flow heat exchanger now see parallel flow means both fluids are flowing in the same direction here we'll write thi here we'll write tho here we'll write tci here we'll write tco right this is temperature profile of counter flow heat exchangers both fluids are flowing in opposite direction thi tho tci tco then we'll see temperature profiles for condensers and boilers now see there are two types of heat one is sensible heat and one is latent heat in this heat exchangers both heats are sensible heats because heat is sensed there is temperature change in case of latent heat you know that what is latent heat the heat which is utilized for phase conversion in case of latent heat there is no temperature change just take example of condensation 
in case of condensation the temperature will remain same only phase will change from vapor state to liquid state the vapor will get condensed but its temperature will not change now see as the vapor will get condensed into liquid it will reject heat and when it will reject heat this cold fluid will absorb heat and its temperature will increase so this is the temperature profile for condenser i repeat this is the temperature profile for condenser tci as well as tco sorry thi as well as tho condensate will be the hot fluid because it is rejecting heat thi and tho will be same why it will be same because there is condensation condensation is phase change so there is no temperature change this is thi tho this is tci cold fluid is entering from the left side and it is leaving from the right side obviously tco will be greater than tci now second diagram is for boiling this is boiling right now in boiling this is let's say tci and tco there is no temperature change only liquid is getting converted into vapor by absorbing heat from the hot fluid so this is tci tco tci and tco are same now as it is absorbing heat from the hot fluid right hot fluid what will happen to hot fluid it will reject its heat and its temperature will decrease this is thi and this is tho right so when you will come for the next lecture in next lecture we will see analysis of heat exchangers right